sleep, come stand with me. This is our time. We're changing the world. We won't back down this time all around. In every city, in every town. Changing the world Can you hear our voices breaking through? There's a fire in our hearts seeking truth Oh, changing the world Oh, 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 Hi guys, how are you? It's me, Alex, and of course, Dispatch Training Center. I hope that trucking is getting a little bit better for you and market is switching. Well, as many of you know, to be a pro dispatcher, you have to have lots of different qualities. You need to know how to multitask. You need to have negotiation skills. You need to organize your time and you need to understand equipment types. You have to be able to negotiate the rates, but what does it take for pro dispatcher to really be a pro. And I do believe that you need to have the tools. And today on the market, we have so many different apps, but the most important is, is your load board. And I'm so proud that we uh, have been partner for the that freight and analytics uh, company. And we are bringing Mike today, who is gonna show us the new product which they've been working on for a while. And now we all gonna be learning how to use it. And it's going to be that one, DAT one. I'm gonna bring Michael and he's their product manager and he's gonna show us all the tricks and the new ideas and what do we need to get used to and what is it gonna be better? Is it really gonna be that load board that finally gonna help you to become that pro? So please, Welcome, Michael, and we're going to ask the questions directly from DAT Pro. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? We are good. So as you know, we are Dispatch Training Center. So our mission is to educate people who would love to become dispatchers, company dispatchers, independent dispatcher. So also, we have a lot of people who come for us when they become new carrier. So people who open trucking company and they also debate, well, should I be using load board? Does it make sense for me to use uh, that or uh, truck stop or one, two, three boards or the broker's boards? So can you tell us why that have been number one for a long time and what is new and exciting going on? So go ahead. All right. Well, I think DAT is number one. Uh, because, well, we've been doing this longer than anybody else. I mean, if you think about it, it was uh, Jubit's Truck Stop in Portland, Oregon that started the whole freight matching industry as far as load boards are concerned. So we've been doing this for over 40 years now, and I think we have a pretty good handle on it. And we, we, we're constantly in touch with our customers asking for what they're looking for. You know, what, what, what are we missing in here? What, what can we do better? And we're constantly looking for those ways to update and bring these these new uh, these new ideas and new features into our products. And that's what I think we did really did a great job of recently with the with the release of DAT one. So let me just go back for people who are new to the industry or people who just joining us. So right now we're just looking at the power dead, and we can see that now it looks a little bit different. So I personally always use a pro account. Uh, the highest paying account because I wanted to have all the tools. But now we can see that it is that one. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So when we're going to go to that one first, of course, you're going to show us all the new things which, which you can share today in one hour. It's not enough time. But I just want to make sure that people understand that you guys did such a great job that you have all of this actually breakdown of the guides so people don't have to get frustrated right so 
if you need to know how to search the world while well, you click and you guys actually did a great job and that's what i'm sharing with the students they got it as a homework my class right now they have to watch it they have to reread it they have to take notes so you guys did a great job you even have your youtube as well where you have a really good short videos so people do not have get upset oh my god how i'm gonna get to, to used to that that one right uh, i am so used and i was one of them i actually believe it or not i was like wow i'm so used in for 10 years i i like the way it looks i like to post let's say i just post i like the cleanest of the, uh, of the load board and now how it's gonna make me feel comfortable again so tell me, how can this process be easier for people who've been using it and how we can actually maybe some little tips, which maybe you miss as a dispatcher or maybe as a new product comes in, you don't really know how to make it easier. So here you go. You have all the air and you can share whatever you want to share. I'm adding your board to the screen and you can start probably from the simple two things first posting the truck and searching the load so let's cover those two features first absolutely and i'll be the first to say change is hard i remember when my bank updated recently and i had to learn how to pay my bill online all over again i was frustrated so i totally understand change is difficult but hopefully change it can be better and that's what i'm hoping that, that i can show you guys today is is what we've done really is to improve the, the whole concept of freight matching. So I will go over posting trucks and searching loads and a couple other things that I'd like to introduce to you guys too that are brand spanking new to the load board. So first, let's go ahead and start with that posting trucks. So you'll see uh, um, nowadays that you have um, the ability to, oh, let's see, I'm logged in to the wrong one. Hold on a second. I'm Let me... make this, yeah, I'm gonna make the screen a little bit bigger so people can see better. So we're gonna be, a little bit on the bottom with you. They don't really have to look at us. They look have to look at the product. Okay. So let me log out of this guy right here and log in as a different user. So I have, um, so I have what you guys need. One moment. Okay. We want to start with post trucks first. So let's do that. I'll bring us back for now while you're still uh, uh, putting your information. Guys, make sure whoever's watching us, I see that we have people watching us from Facebook, YouTube. Make sure you guys ask the question when we're going to do the demonstration because this is something you guys all have to get used to in the next few weeks. So while Mike is still logging in, I'm going to say hi to our new member. Wow, thank you so much to become a supporter of our channel. Uh, hello, Waverly. Uh, educate us. Thank you. Hello, Miss Alex. Hello, Face uh, Facebook users cannot see the names until I go after the show. Uh, hi, Alex. Hello. Hello. Hi, Mike. So they hey, okay. Emmanuel is here, my student now, actually the carrier. So everybody wants to learn what's new. So we're gonna bring them, we're gonna bring the mic back after he logs in. I'm just waiting for his screen to go. Let's say hi to Ukrainian students. Hello, Heroyam Slava, Slava Ukraini. Okay, and we also have hello Alex. Love learning from your videos. Cannot wait to take class. Mike is back. So yep. we are sharing. So here you go, Mike. Take over. All right. So what I wanted to show you first was posting trucks. And so we have this new section over here for my trucks. And you can see I have a few that I have uh, posted over in the past here. And to, and to post a truck now, we try to make things a little bit better. And one of the things that we added here is the is a, like a concept of a truck profile. So you're going to see, in, in especially in our app, you guys, um, for the DAT1 mobile app, that you're you're going to be able to save your truck in there, so the, the dimensions, the truck type. So when you're doing a posting or a search, you're not going to have to type in 53 foot, 45,000 flatbed, stuff like that every time. We're just going to save it there for you. So it, it, it'll make things a little bit quicker for you. So posting your truck, you're going to select your equipment type like you always have and the length and weight. Did you guys kept all the different equipment types or did you shorten that list? Because it was no. extensive. No, we do have the same equipment type list, but one thing that we are adding that we've already added to our mobile app that we'll be adding to the, the website here pretty soon is a sprinter van equipment type. 
that's a popular one nowadays. There's a lot of carriers out there with Sprinter vans. So we're going to be adding that equipment type here real shortly. But uh, so we didn't reduce the list. We actually made it a little bit bigger, Alexandra. That's good because I cannot afford that expensive selector. So hopefully we have enough loads for them from DAT1 so they can be a part of your team now still with the specialty equipment. And here's the one thing I really want to point out to you guys, because I don't know if a lot of carriers or dispatchers know this. So this is really important to point out to you guys. When you're posting a truck, it is super important to put a destination in there. I know it's not required. And so many carriers and dispatchers leave that blank and say, I'm willing to go anywhere. Well, I'm here to tell you guys, brokers block those postings. They hide them and they don't even see them. So by not putting a destination in there, you're really not doing yourself any favors and you're not going to hardly get any phone calls if you do that. So the suggestion I have is to use these valid zones that we have, these geographies, these large areas, regions that you are actually willing to go to. And you can select, I mean, really, in theory, you could select all of them, you know, which would mean I'm willing to go anywhere. But it is important to put something in this field or you, you're you just not going to get the phone calls that you're seeking. So well, I'm you know use- how I validate that? I can tell you this. If you post in the truck, let's say in Dallas, Texas, and you're willing to go anywhere, you just simply a desperate dispatcher because that means that you do not have plan A, B, and C. So if I would be a broker, I would never call you because if you don't even know where you're willing to go and why you're going there, why would I choose you? I want to work with people who know, well, I'm going to Midwest. I'm going to Washington, let's say West Coast. I'm going to East Coast because go everywhere. This is already suicidal mission from the beginning. So thank you, Michael. I can proudly say that you can be part of my teaching technique. Right. Star, for a, a star for a me right there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you're also going to see in here, as I keep going, you're going to see that you're going to put your date in like normal, but here is something new for y'all. And that is the ability to put your rate in there. See, one of the things that carriers, dispatchers have told us in the past is when I do post my truck, I just get a bunch of phone calls from brokers that are just offering these awful rates. And I wish they wouldn't even call me. And so we thought by, by putting your, by listing the rate that you're really wanting to make and the broker's ability to see that then they're going to see that, hey, this guy wants three bucks a mile. I'm not willing to pay three bucks a mile. I'm going to leave that guy alone. And so this, we hope by doing this, that this is going to cut back on some of those cheaper brokers with those bad rates from calling you and leave it and just leave only the brokers that are serious about paying the rate that you want to make calling you. And so that's a new one we got. Are you telling me, Mike, that now since market is down, If I want to be realistic and I want to be fair to my carrier and I'm a dispatcher and I do agree that at least it has to be at least $2.50 for driving, if I'm going to put there $2.50, it depends on the area. That means that I will not receive not even one phone call because automatically my posting is not going to be showing to the brokers who pay less. Oh, let, yeah, let me correct that. The, the brokers, all the brokers will see your posting, um, regardless of whether you put a rate on there or not. But they're they're going to see your rate now. And so if they see that this person is asking for three bucks a mile, they know that this is what that carrier wants to make. Why would I call them if I'm not willing to offer that much? They'll have that choice, though, Alexander. They'll see the posting yeah. regardless. Yeah, I just want to make sure that it's still going to be there because we're going to go to the human aspect of this, right? And of course, when you let people to choose the rate I am willing to take for people go unrealistically. Well, I'm not going to move unless everybody pays me five dollars. Well, not realistic. You know, but I'm not going to move if nobody pays me four dollars. Not realistic. So I just want to make sure if people going to put unrealistic target that they're posting still going to be there no matter what. And you just clarify that it's still going to be there, which is a good, good, yeah. good, good part of the, this process. All right. So as I keep going down here, you'll see that uh, you still have your comment lines that you could put in there um, and your contact phone number. Um, At this point, you're just going to post your truck. So you have everything in there. You post it. And now you see that you have your truck posted with a three dollar a mile minimum rate. Don't call me if you're not willing to offer me that. And now I'm just waiting for people to call. And of course, I have the same functions I did in, in our previous packages. I can refresh this posting if I want to. I can make it or I can unpost it. You can see I'm refreshing it right now and it's telling me I have to wait 15 minutes. 
but it's queued up. It's just going to queue up now that I clicked on this and it's counting backwards. And as soon as it gets to zero, this posting will automatically turn to zero minutes old again. And you kind of like keeping your truck fresh because brokers want to see those, you know, the, 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 the youngest one at the top. Okay, so are you actually recommending for dispatchers to click on the refresh so their posting goes up or the program does it automatically? Can we just clarify that? Because you are the uh, kind of product uh, person here. So do I yeah. have to click or it has to, or it's going to be automatically? No, you have to click on it. Uh, you're going to have to click on it. But unlike Trucker's Edge in the past that you you seriously had to wait 15 minutes and then like it, it warned you, sorry, you can't do this, wait 15 minutes. This one, when I click on it, knows that I have to wait 15 minutes. But since I clicked on it, it just says, hey, I'll wait the 15 minutes and I'll automatically update this one for you. And if you had a bunch of postings in here, you could select them all and you could refresh them all at one time by hitting that button over there. And it'll queue them all up to be refreshed. So you don't have to sit there and wait anymore. Just hit the button once, walk away. Your posting will refresh itself in 15 minutes. Okay, so that's a good thing. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, I mean, posting is very basic, right? You, you get your truck in there, you wait for phone calls. And if you get one, you just got to get in there and unpost that load, get it out or unpost that truck, get it out of the database. So no one else is going to call you on that one since it's not available anymore. And now you can see it's unposted, it's out of the database, no more phone calls. And it's just that simple. So easy. Okay. So I posted, I can choose again. We still have, we can choose the zone from Z0 to Z9. We can post by uh, states if I decide Z7, but I don't, for example, want not to go to Oklahoma. I can just post by the states and I can go directly city to city. If I have to bring my driver back exactly, let's say to Memphis, Tennessee, I can post exactly uh, what's that word? Memphis, Tennessee to Chicago, let's say, right? So all those features are the same. City, states, zones, right? And you yes. are still Z0 to Z9. You're not switching that. This is still, still the same system, right? Still the same system, but one minor difference. One minor difference. But uh, this is something that we've gotten some feedback on, and we're going we're gonna, to um, fix this uh, in the future. And what I'm, what I'm talking about is in our old systems, we, when you did Z0, Z1, Z2, you just ran them all together, Z0. You know, type it in there, Z0, Z1, Z2, Z3. You can't do that anymore. So what DAT1 is expecting is a comma in between each of them. So I do want to make sure that we're all aware that that's a difference in DAT1. If you want to do that, it's Z's, Z0, comma, Z1, comma. How about Texas 2? How about Louisiana? Okay, and that so will, it, it'll understand it as long as you put those commas in between them. So minor change, but it is a change. And that's something that it's, it's difficult to get used to. Yeah, because you know what? In the class, it always was a hard time because people wanted to put comma. People wanted to put comma between the states. And I was always like, no, you cannot put the comma. Don't put the comma. Don't put the space. So now <laughs> I even have to get used to this because now I have to tell, well, make sure you, and I, I mean, I personally have to make sure I put the comma now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for pointing that out because I have class on Saturday and actually we're going to go through all of this. So it would be kind of making me uncomfortable if I would try to post it and not be able to do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, that hopefully answers your question on posting trucks. Um, and if, if if you don't mind, we can move on to uh, searching loads, I suppose. Uh, let me just, since you are here on the date, can you just show them really quick when, for example, my driver is home and he can go today, tomorrow or day after. He's just looking for something good or he wanted the truck posted. Can you just show them that we do have availability to choose not just one day, and how do you do that? Because a yeah, lot so of uh, students get confused on that. Yeah, so when you click on the calendar, the first day you click on will show up as your first day, and the last day you click on will will create that date range. So it's as easy as doing that. Just go in there and click on a day, click on another day, and that becomes your range. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so posting trucks are still easy. You have to remember to refresh because you don't want to be the one on the bottom. You don't have to wait 15 minutes anymore. It's going to refresh automatically, which is a good thing for people to know. And also commas, 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 commas now, okay? Move on. Not that hard. We can use. We can get used to commas. Just don't switch on us too often. So let's go to uh, searching the loads. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click on search loads over here. And I think I need to close this up first. There we 
we go. So search loads. And I'm, uh, forgive me, I'm working in our test environment. I'm working in our, yeah, I was working in our test environment. So it's taking a moment here. But search loads. I'm sorry, I'm on my loads, not search loads. I'm trying to get to search loads. I think at this point, since we're done posting trucks, I'm going to go back into my normal environment. Uh, um, yeah, just go back to the one which worked faster, yeah? Yep, I'm going right back there because that was the one I wanted to use originally. So we'll just log back in there and I'll do some load searching now. All right, so search loads is where we want to go. And this uh, this is your load search screen. And this is different, you guys. We have tried to make some improvements here based on feedback that we've gotten. But that doesn't mean we're done. We continue to get feedback every single day. And I, I can tell you that we're, we're releasing uh, tonight uh, this save searches feature. This is something people wanted. So that's why I wanted to go into our test environment so I could show you this, our save searches that we're going to be adding there. So um, so we continue to tweak this based on the feedback that, we be, that we've been getting during this migration time. So let's go ahead and go through a search so you guys can see what the differences are now. Um, you're always going to start with that origin and destination. So where are you looking here? I'm looking out of, let's say, San Francisco. And I can put my deadhead uh, origin around that. Maybe I'm going to put 250 on that one. And the destination. Come on, Michael. We're not desperate dispatchers. We're not that heading 250. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be professional. Let's go back to 100 miles. Come on. Alexandra, it's late. It's late in the day. I got to make sure I have some loads to show oh, okay. you. Let's choose a different city. Let's choose Chicago then. So we have the better, but we are we are teaching people to be professional. So we're not deadheading guys to 150 miles. Chicago, 100 miles. Usually, 100 miles is what you want? Okay, 100 miles it is. Miles. Des destination, I'm gonna leave this, uh, well, actually I'm gonna leave it open for the moment because I wanna see all the loads that are just in the Chicago area. So we'll just leave that alone. And then I'm gonna select, uh, uh, let's go with vans on this. All right, so I have today's date. Maybe I will choose today and tomorrow to see what's there. Let's so I pick just tomorrow because today it's already late. So you're right. You're right. Let's go to 16th and maybe our drivers already driving. They are loaded. We are choosing tomorrow. Now Only this... tomorrow. We're not even choosing two days, Mike, because we are oh. professional dispatchers. One I didn't day realize... our delivers tomorrow. He's gonna get loaded tomorrow because we are using your load board, right? I didn't realize I had a second day selected there. Thanks for catching that. Uh, so I have the I have all this in, and at this point, you guys, you can actually hit search. But what you might be noticing is missing is where do I put my length and weight? Where do I decide whether I want fulls, partials, or both? And so we've added some of these filters in here that you can choose that it's going to retain this information for you. So you don't have to necessarily type it out every single time. That's the goal. And so length, let's say this uh, the, this is a 53 footer, 45,000 pounds. And I'm interested in all of it. Give me, give me everything. And I hit done, and you're gonna see it's automatically gonna run that search for me. And so um, there's other filters I can take advantage of. Like I can choose instead of searching 24 hours back, I can choose down to two hours if I want to. And uh, yeah, those are that's the differences. There is is instead of having one long form with all of that that you have to fill out. How about we hold on and retain some of this information so you just have to fill out the the important stuff each time. And so now I did that and I have, uh, I'm gonna redo my search here and you'll see I have all these results. And one of the things that I'm gonna point out to you guys is I have 42 exact matches here, but it is also showing me that there's 450 similar results out there. So just like Trucker's Edge did before where you had your exact matches and your similar matches, you're gonna have the same thing here. And if you, if you wanna see those similar matches, you're simply gonna scroll down to the end of it, get through all of your exact matches, and you'll see at the very bottom, you have include similar results. And when you click that, that's when you're going to get all those extra results that aren't, aren't an exact match. They don't exactly match your search, but they're, they're real close. For whatever reason, uh, like this one, I can see um, if I'm looking at these similar results, why is this one not a match? Well, it looks like this is 60 miles away. That, that looks like a match, but uh, the length and weight might not be a match here or, or weight. The de the DHO might be too much. It's it just, it's so close. Uh, we're, we're trying to get you results that are just a day off maybe, or a little bit further away that you wanted. But our, our hope there is if none of the exact matches work out, that you don't have to sit there and tweak your search over and over and over again. Try some of those similar results yeah, out. I think the difference was it was 48 feet uh, trailer. 
So that's what they need. And we posted 53. So right here, before it used to be that brokers would go and they put 48 or 53, but they actually meant 53. So is is that for the broker side, can they be more specific when they really put? Because now, see, like that similar match, you know why it went to similar? Because it was 48 feet. You probably did not catch. See, it's 48 feet instead of 53. See, it was nothing wrong with that. Uh, with that, that had. It was because we did not put, we put anywhere. So destination did not matter. Uh, van or reefer work. But I think because it's right there, 48 feet, you think it's that's why? It's no, I think it's. I, I think in this particular case, it's because it's van or it's it's uh, if you look at the dates, it's the 17th and 18th. And we searched for the 16th, right? Okay. We searched for tomorrow. So that was a closest. So that was a closest date. Okay. Yeah. So this is just the dates that are off. But you know, if, if it, it's close, right? If you're if you're not able to move that to, uh, tomorrow, then this one might just be a perfect match for you. It's only 60 miles away. So yeah, that's our, that's our right now on the went standard. What is your opinion? For example, the WAN standard can still be WAN air ride. The WAN st standard can be maybe also vented van or whatever. Do you suggest to actually go and post vented van, van air ride, uh, or just put WAN standard and then read through description? How does the program read it? Well, the bro it's really up to the broker. Uh, when we're training them, we're trying to we train them to be specific. You know, what type of equipment do you need? If, if you truly need a vented van, post it as a vented van. Don't post it as a regular van. But you guys have probably been around the business for a while. A lot of these brokers have just should have choose that basic van, even though they might need a van with with a roller bed. They're just going to choose a basic van. And a lot of times, and a lot of times, they do not post that in the comments. And that's when we have. When the broker does not ex uh, explain all the description and the dispatcher doesn't ask questions, then we send in their own equipment just simply because it was posted as a WAN standard. But maybe they did need that vented van, which was not disclosed, and the rate confirmation did not say. And usually that's when it becomes nightmare. And I, you know, I am on the both sides as a dispatcher, as a broker, and I would like people to be as specific as possible because it's going to be easy for everybody who is using the load board. Yeah. And I can tell you from a, I, I train the people here at DAT that train our customers. And I can tell you one thing is, is certain about the way we train brokers. When we train brokers on how to post loads, we ask they be very specific. We say, you know, I know that this field for your the, the drop off time, you know, the, the time that you have to drop off. I know that's not required, but you know what? If you don't put it there, you're going to get carriers calling you that can't make that time. And what are they doing? They're wasting your time as a broker, but they're wasting their time too. So we really try to convince brokers as best as we can to fill out every single field available. Um, the one that we get a lot of pushback on still is commodity. You know, a lot of them don't want to put the commodity in there. And that's understandable. You know, their, their fear is their fear is if I put the commodity, they're going to know who the shipper is and they'll cut me out of the deal and call the shipper directly. So we do well, hear that. We know it's not going to happen. This is the silliest excuse a broker can give you when we talk about shippers or receivers. When I am asking about shipper and receiver because I'm a pro dispatcher, what I'm asking you, because I already know how long is it going to take to unload in Costco, how long is it going to take to unload in Walmart, how long is it going to take to unload in Dollar General. I cannot just go jump and go steal your load, right? So I am such a direct on that. And that's why some brokers do not like my TikToks because I'm like, when I'm asking you, I just need to make sure that my driver gonna be okay to pick up maybe your even load next day because yeah, I need to know how long it's gonna take to load and unload. And I can tell you this now looking at this screen, the biggest misrepresentation presentation is about the weight. And a lot of times owner operators, drivers, get so angry at dispatchers because when i look and it tells me it's going to be twenty thousand, right my driver goes and pick it up and usually it's going to be 38 or even 42. and this is what i would love brokers to understand guys it's a big difference in the fuel uh, use if you go through mountains it's also with the wear of equipment and then I understand the rate confirmation tells you, well, we can load up to 46,000 if it's a drive -in. We can go up to 45,000 if it's a reefer. We can go up to 48 if it's a flatbed. But 
what is the purpose of the very innovative load board where I know my owner operator, right? And I know that he is not willing to go in whole 42,000, but that puts me in position as a professional dispatcher. Well, I trust you guys, right? I trust Michael. Michael said, if the broker put there 20,000, it should be 20,000, maybe plus minus two, 3,000. Do you understand where we come from as a dispatchers? I certainly do. I certainly do. Yeah, uh, we we can only ask, you know, to be specific, and, and the brokers will put what they put in there, though. Uh, and some of them are very good about being detailed. Some of them are, are extremely lazy and, and are going to put in the bare bones. And some of them, as you notice, don't even provide the length and weight at all on their posting. But they do have an option to be specific, right? They can, like you said, they can even put picking up at 5 p.m., delivering at 9 a.m., drop trailer, or maybe, you know what, food grade uh, only, or you need to be fresh on hours because it's 7 a.m. So they do have that ability. But a lot of them, first, they don't do it because of the laziness. Secondary, because they want to receive more phone calls so they can choose it desperate carrier who yep. still is going to ask the question because they have not been trained by me like transit has to make sense commodity has to make sense shipper has to make sense receiver then only we're going to talk about the money so i mean this is their sales technique but you guys in the middle and i just want people to understand that this is not the fault of the dad because that's what they hear oh dad posted well you guys only giving us software i can mispost my equipment as well brokers mispost their loads you guys in the middle so the message which i want to tell to everybody guys do not scream at dat1 or at me as a dispatcher because this is everybody's job to put the information together well let's continue so now we posted the truck let's go back to the destination because as we teach him, we cannot be going anywhere so let's increase 150 let's be realistic 150 in this market for tomorrow so and let's choose actually that van air ride i really mm -hmm. want to have, we're gonna go to midwest so let's to choose midwest by zones all right let me find van air ride on our list here just put va <laughs> yep, there it is van air ride and you wanted uh, tomorrow and the next day tomorrow but we're gonna choose a destination I really want to stay on Midwest. So let's show them how we can go still by the zones and we're choosing the Midwest. Z4, Z5, Z6. Z4, Z5, Z6. All right. Oops, Z4. Remember Z4. to put commas. I got to put the commas. There we go. We have all those in there. And was it, what, I'm sorry, Alexandra, was it just tomorrow's date or tomorrow and the next day? Just tomorrow. Let's, you know, whatever we're going to see tomorrow. Okay. Well, let me go back. Let me search back a, a little bit further because it is it is late in the day. I'm not seeing anything at there. And yeah, I'm not seeing any exact results for that right here. Um, I see a bunch of similar results. That's like 48, 48 hours. Let's do 48 hours back. Probably maybe that's what it is. It, yeah, it could be, but it's also, it's it's just late. But yeah, I'm, I'm just getting similar and results. Here you go, Mike. And here you go, Mike. You know why? I did this on purpose. Just because you're not dispatching, you're the product uh, specialist. Because when you put van air right, most of the, the brokers who even need for you to drive the uh, drive in to be van air right, they're not gonna post it. So that's why. Here's a tip, guys. Even if you have van air right, just post as a van standard and make sure that you emphasize. Well, we do have van air right, so we need to switch the equipment. So let's just switch to the van standard, and we're gonna have our postings back. I 100% agree with you. Uh, Van standard is how I would teach every carrier to search. Don't don't go specific. Go just do the standard yeah. one. Do we have to click on the search again? Do, oh, we, oh, it's gonna okay. Search okay. So now we have at least something. Okay, so let's look, yeah, okay, 74 results. We can still organize by what? So now it's a little bit switch. So first you see the age, right? So we still have an age column. 
right? We see the age. Yeah, okay. Was, yep. You have, you can sort by the columns, age, rate, trip, uh, DHO pickup and the rest. But I also want to show you that we have a lot more sort options. You don't have to click on a column header. If you click on our sort button, here are the various ways that you can sort yours and you can sort it. And this is what I think is the most interesting for carriers and dispatchers is you can sort by the highest rate or the highest per mile rate now. And so if I was to select rate highest, now my results have just been returned with the biggest rates at the top of my screen here. The highest rate does not mean that this is a good load. So nope. as a pro dispatcher, let's go by the highest rate per mile. So let's let's do that and see which load actually has the highest rate per mile because that means that hopefully as a carrier you're gonna have some profit. So let's click on one of those. I don't care, whatever you choose. Right here looks like a good one. And you can see that the total rate on this one is uh, they're offering $12.50 and that's $3.11 a mile. Okay, so let's look at here. So we have where we're picking up this planes. We're picking up tomorrow. We are going to the North Canton, Ohio. We need full, uh, it's going to be full load, 32000 uh, we need the drive and 53 feet. Okay, so you guys already calculated the trip, loaded miles, of course, for two. We can see spot rate. So let's talk about that spot rate. So now, instead of me going and doing that silly quick rate search, which was going to the different window, right? Now it's going to do for me automatically. So you know what? I might love that, that one because I don't like to type too much. Yeah, we don't want you to have to leave our screen. We don't want you to have to, hey, if you want the rate, why should you have to go to the tools and click on a rate lookup tool? Why can't we just provide it to you right here within this screen? So that that was our goal, was to have you not have to leave this screen and, and to really become more efficient. This is your second star for this. You're receiving my second star as a dispatcher now because it's used to drive me crazy. I had to go to the toolbar, quick rate search. It, if I use two screens, sometimes it would go on a separate screen. If I was teaching the class and sharing this screen, it would not show. So I love this. So let's talk about this spot rate. What is the difference between the spot rate and the contract rate? Because a lot of people get confused right here. That is a wonderful question. I, I hear that confusion too. So um, these rates that you're seeing here are coming from our, our rate view product that we sell. Um, and rate view is a database of rates and where we get those rates are from our customers. We have over a thousand, what we call contributors that, that are giving us their freight bills, you know, so we can see exactly where the load was, where it was going to, how much it cost. And we can create this whole database so we can actually show you what the average rate is from anywhere to anywhere. And so what the difference is between spot and contract is, is if you are a broker working with a carrier or a carrier working with a broker, it is the broker spot rate that you will, that you will want to use. The contract rate is it what is a rate that the shipper would pay a carrier if there was no broker involved in the middle at all. So that's the difference, you guys. If you're working directly with a shipper, contract rate is your rate. If you're working with a broker, spot rate is what you should expect. And yes, the spot rate is always going to be less than the contract rate. Well, the because brokers have to make their money as well, right? There you go. Yep. <laughs> That's so why. Let me ask you this. So let me ask you this. Since I see the contract rate is 1564, spot market is 1282. Is that going to be my negotiation skills? How much can I push towards that contract rate, that broker at that day? Because approximately that's what they kind of getting paid. Yes or no? Well, that, yes. I mean, you can try to, to cut into their profit margin because that's what you're doing when you do that. You can try to cut into the profit margin by, by negotiating that rate up higher. Um, that's not always going to work, right? You're not always going to get the success that you want. You might get hung up on sometimes when you try to drive it up too much. Especially this market, yeah. So they don't really care. And how how close can we get to that? So, I mean, right now we see that they posted for 1250 So your spot rate approximately kind of on point, 1282 1250 So there is that 50 bucks you're going to ask for. Oh, well, can I have extra 100 They're going to end up giving you maybe that 1300 So. Thanks for telling one more time, because that's why carriers and drivers and actually dispatchers get confused and they tell 
who care who are the brokers tql coyote well i know that you are paying 1564 no they're not paying 5064 if you have ability to go directly to shipper or any customer but again we have to remember to go directly you have to have a capacity of equipment one guy cannot go with one truck to anyone. Let's say he's going to go to Walmart and say, oh, here I am, Mike Transportation. I've been in business for 10 years. I really want to get that load. Can you get me? I mean, Walmart's going to look at him and like, okay, Mike, can you do 10 loads a week with one truck? And Mike going to say, no, but just give me one load. So that's why people have to understand as much as we dislike having people in between, which is third party PL, our Lovely brokers from TQL, Coyote, Robinson, RxO, lots of young kids. We still need to have them in the middle because this is how business works. We have carriers. We have third-party PLs and we have people who sell, ship, whatever, right? We are, as a dispatchers, in between brokers, third-party, and carriers. This is a tool to help you to see realistically what's going on. But you have to be really, really kind of pushy to tell, well, I see that that is showing that you have to pay me 1564. No. And let's go back. How this data is generated? Is this really generated for today? Is it one week behind? Is it two weeks behind? Is this one month behind? So tell me honestly, Mike, and do not, do not lie to us. I want to see how real <laughs> data is. Well, we're showing you right here, this is a 90 day average. So this is taking the last 90 days of freight bills that we've received. This is the average based on all the rates we saw in the 90 days between the Plains, Illinois and North Canton, Ohio. And so um, that is very, if you think about it, it's very accurate. We're getting them directly from the freight bill. So it's not like we're getting them like um, it's, we're, it's not like we're getting them secondhand. It's not like we're getting them that uh, where it's not the final bill calculated. We're getting the actual amount that the broker paid the carrier. And that is what goes into making up the average rate. So I don't think that you guys will find a more accurate rate anywhere out there based on the way that we collect these rates. Okay, 90 days. 90 well, days nine is a long time. So let's go to the market conditions where you can show me trend lines for different equipment. Let's look at three last months. So where is it going to be now? That's going to be right there in the... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, market conditions. I can access it right from this, this window. So once I click on it, it's going to take me into DAT IQ. And I think I'm in a test environment, so don't expect it to be fast. <laughs> okay. But market because conditions. Before, while it's doing that, do you agree that three months, nowadays in trucking, this is a long period of time and market does shift. And that's what people need to also understand. Oh, it did not take us there. Well, just remember, remember one thing I want to point out is this, what I'm showing you here is a 90 day rate, but based on the package you subscribe to, you can get a 15 day rate, a 30 day rate, a 90 day rate. So this particular one is showing me a 90 day rate. But if I if I was a Trucker's Edge Pro subscriber or a or a, a select or office, I'm going to see that 15 day rate. And so, yes, 15 day rate is way more accurate than a 90 day rate, because what's happened in the last two weeks is su substantially more relevant than what's, ha than what's happened in the last 90 days. OK, so you, we were in a different um, different subscription. That's why, like, usually I see that not 90 days. I see 15 days. So we were testing your standard subscription now. Yeah, this is this is what you would see here. Not standard. This is just a night. This is just showing me the 90 day because of the way I'm logged in in the test environment with my subscription. I actually have office. So I get the 15 day rate with office. Um, and if you subscribe to rate view. If you actually subscribe to our rate view product, then you can get it down to a three day rate, three days. What's happened in the last three days, which is it, it doesn't get any more accurate than that. So, okay, uh, so we, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen because I logged in and because, you know, I have the pro account. So that's okay. how it's going right now. Right. So if I'm going to click on next. OK, got it. This little what is so here. How can I work around here? 
Well, first of all, I, what you're seeing right now in this default view, you're looking at two different maps. Let's close one of those out so we can just focus on one. So there you go. And then okay. lastly, we want to really focus on the outbound number. So you want to make sure it's outbound that you have selected up above. Okay. Yep, you are on outbound. Perfect. Okay, so now you're just going to select the equipment type that you're interested in and the area that you're interested in. Okay, so Chicago. All yeah. right, so... So what you're seeing there, and you're looking at the prior, I believe you're looking at the prior business day. So this is our totals as of yesterday. And what we're saying in this particular market, the Chicago market, it's loose, which means there is very little demand for carriers. See the red markets, you guys, the red markets are where carriers and dispatchers want to live. It's those red areas where there's a really high load to truck ratio. There's way more loads that, there than there are trucks. If you can get yourself to those red areas, well, that's how you're going to be commanding that rate, you know, because if you're if you're in demand, when you get to, let's say, one of those like Cleveland area where it shows red hot up there, if you're in demand in Cleveland, then when the broker says, hey, I'd, I'd like to hire you for 250 a mile, you're like, you're like, you know, I know you're desperate. How about 350 a mile? You know, because you're in that that position of power being in those red, red hot markets. The blue markets, though, as carriers, those are not the most favorable for you. There's way, there's less loads, so the, the demand for your truck is not nearly as high as it would be in a red market, and therefore the rates are going to be indicative of that. You're not going to be commanding the rate in those markets. You'll be you'll be accepting the rate in that of that market more often. So when so I talk to care, go ahead. Go back to this. So let's go back to this rat since you said Cleveland, right? So I choose a Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So it says plus 63. So what is that number actually stays for? Plus 63 what? Well, 63 is what we call our market conditions index. So that's the scale that you're looking at. The, the If you look at the legend, you, you can see negative 100 is blue and positive 100 is scorching hot. So this is up towards the hotter part of it. And what, why we base, why we say that is if you look at the load to truck ratio to the right of that, you're going to see that there's two and a half loads or closely roughly two and a half loads for every one truck. And you're seeing the volume of loads there. There's over, uh, looking at your screen, there's over 2,000 loads right now or were yesterday in that area and not nearly as much trucks there that could handle those loads. So this is why we think that this is going to be, a, a, you know, carrier capacity is going to be tighter. You know, they're going to be more in demand and therefore making more money in that area. Okay. Now, so if you click, on, if, if you you click back on it. Ohio. So we choose a prior business day. How can we choose what's going to, what's have been there for a week, for example? Do we switch right here? Yeah, well, no, to the, you can see that you can only see the current day, prior business day, prior eight days or prior 30 days. So if you wanted to go back and see what it was like for the last 30 days, you could drag that slider that slider to the right of you. You just drag that oh, down a couple oh, notches. So here. Okay. Oh, right here. Yeah. And that's okay. how you go back eight days. Now you're looking at what the market looked like for the previous eight days combined or the previous 30 days oh, combined. Let's go for today. So it's not available because probably what? Oh, no, it says very yeah. tight capacity. So ratio yeah. one to nine. So you telling me for what? And we choose a drive in that it was, hold on. Oh my God. I have to stop moving. Sorry, guys. So you telling me that there is, 422 loads for drive-in. So you're telling me that I should be there, right? So yeah. plus 54. So let's test to the reality. For today, let's do it for tomorrow. Cleveland. Right? Cleveland, Ohio. Drive-in, drive-in, right? Let's just put anywhere. So we do have for tomorrow. 575. So if we're going to go back to this, it was 422. So kind of accurate, right? Well, what you're also going to see is uh, one thing I'd like to point out about the numbers here. You're not going to see them exactly match up. I'm sure you guys, I'm sure, Alexander, you've noticed that some brokers like to post multiple loads in our database, but they're really the same load over and over and over again. Well, so you understand, we try to we try to account for that when we're coming up with our market conditions. So we have an algorithm that will remove what we call duplicate postings. So for any company that's got a bunch of duplicate postings, you're going to see. Are you talking that about TQL right now? I'm not naming anybody, but. <laughs> 
maybe but yeah so we're, we're trying to account for that by removing those duplicate postings so yes where you saw 575 if you get rid of duplicate or erroneous postings it really is down closer to 422. So let me say this, where do I see this feature now? Because I do, what I was talking about the trend lines, not the market condition, but trend lines. I do love to see this because it helps my new dispatchers to kind of see what was going on right now in March, what was going on in February, what was going on in January, because as we said, 90 days, this is a long time. You see the difference. If they were saying that, well, my God, we were not making money in December. Well, I guess when you look right now in March, you were making a little bit more money, way more. So where do I see this right now on the debt one? Where would I find that? Well, that's a good, well, you, you're, you're not going to see that on that one. That is more part, that's part of our DAT IQ, um, Alexandra. So we, we do have a website, iq.dat.com, and that's where all of our data and analytics services live. And so that's you where just good pictures from me. I cannot post them anymore unless I'm going to have your extra product. You do have access to trend lines, though. I think I want to pull up my tool menu right now. But I believe if you okay. go to tools let's, right now, let's if you do go it. Back, I'll, I'll hear you. So I'm sharing your screen. There's your trend lines right here. So I went to tools here, Alexandra, and I can I can come down. I'm sorry. I went to tools down here. And I just come over here now and I can click on trend lines and it will take me to trend lines. But I, uh, there we go. So I can still access it from DAT1. Now you just got to go to your tool menu. And you saw there's quite a few tools <laughs> that we have in here. Um, okay, in, so right let's, let's, go through, let's go through some of them. So first, we already see that quick rate look up. This was an option and you can still do it through the tools. But now you guys incorporated right there on the same page, which... I don't really have to do this step unless I'm just bored or I'm in the class and I'm learning the load board. So you incorporate that one. Let's see another one. Can we just go a little bit up? So you, oh, no, no, no. Sorry. Oh, sorry, where you were just right up. now. So help center. So what is a help center? What, what can people get here? So tell me about this help center. Is that like what? where that you have watched the videos where they can try do the like if troubleshooting with their app, that's that's what anybody can come here before they start complaining on a Facebook. Oh my God, DAT is down. I cannot find the load. So here probably all the answers right here, right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm really proud of the help center that we've created for DAT one. It is, uh, it is, it is, it's pretty big already. And you and you saw that we did create a quick start guide for brokers that are migrating, but also for carriers. We have this wonderful quick start guide. And when you go in there, we've created uh, a bunch of different how tos. Very simple. How do I search in this new product? How do I post? Oh my God, where do I use the alarm match now? All those things that you'll freak out about because it's new. We tried to make Where's it as quick as picture. I want to post it today. Where is it? <laughs> exactly. We tried to accommodate you guys by having all of these uh, these different articles, and and most of these articles you'll see have screenshots, pictures, step by step instructions. But also for people that are very visual and like, oh, I want to read that. Just give me a video. You'll notice that at the bottom of most of these, there is an actual video that you can watch us going through and posting or searching and using the various tools within DAT1. So very okay. proud of this. We, we, we spent a lot of time on this uh, quick start guides for, for you guys is to make it as easy as possible. As I told you before, you already received the first star for that. I told you this was <laughs> something which you guys uh, went uh, beyond what can be expected from a uh, load board. So you guys organized, you made it very clean. The way the video I shot, they are really good, clean, not, you know, not this annoying music or something. So you can really sit down, rewatch a few times, get to the bottom of it. So let's go back to that menu one more time. So this is what's help center. What else there? So that uh, directory. So who is using that? Why people need to know about the existing of the, that directory? Well, yes, this is this is a huge tool for you guys. I, I hope every one of you guys is, is using this tool uh, to, to help vet the brokers that you're talking to. I'm going to go back to the classic version just because that's where our reviews are. We're, we're transitioning this to from our old directory to our new one. So we're right in the middle of this as well. But uh, for the time being, I want to I want to actually use the, the actual DAT directory. So if you go one moment, I'm going to get to the directory itself. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna log in directly to it. So directory or here we go, registry. 
products. We, we have a lot of people who've been using your the highest paying uh, subscriptions for, for example, that pro, and they never knew every single thing they are able to do with this because they never spend time to go and see what else can I use? What other tool do I have? That's why people are like, how do they get this? Well, simple. It's already been there. You just need to know how to use it. Yeah. And if you go into the DAT directory, you can see there's a quick search up here. If you have the, the MC number for the broker, you would just plug it in right here and you would pull that broker right up. I don't have any off the top of my head, but I can just search for a broker and show you what you can see in there. So I'm going to research new business partners and I'm just going to type in that I'm looking for a broker. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm looking for a broker in the California area. So let me just oh, do let's this. Go, let's go to see some scammers. Come on, California, the exactly. number one scammer. <laughs> Let's find one out there. So ABC Logistics, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. So looking at ABC Logistics, this is the wealth of information that we're gathering on all of our customers. And we're getting this information, not just from our customers, but we're getting it from the government. We're getting it from various websites, like, uh, like for instance, CFMCSA. So as I scroll down, you're going to see that I have some information right from DAT. This is what we know about them. They've been a customer of ours for the last three years. Um, I can see that they have a review here. So they've had several reviews, looks like four of them, and they're not great reviews, right? And uh, some of the funnest things we can do is go in there and read some of those reviews. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see that I'm also seeing information about uh, um, the, the broker as far as what the FMCSA has to say about them. So they show me their MC number. They're telling me that they're what their SCAC code is here. And I get to see that... Uh, um, as I scroll down, I can see more information from the FMCSA, like they have active broker authority. They have a bond. Do they have a bond on file? It looks like, yes, they have a bond on file over here. I get to see their insurance company. If I ever needed to file against their, this company's bond, there's their policy number right there. So I don't even need to, I just have it right at my fingertips. And as I keep scrolling down, you guys, um, this is a broker, so they're not going to have any safety ratings. But guess what? Carriers do. And this is where you would see your carrier safety information that we're keeping as well. But also the credit score days to pay history. And look at this one all over the place. They started out really bad, but they really have climbed up and they've leveled off here. I'm looking at their credit score increasing. I'm looking at their days to pay coming down, actually coming way down. So this is a look at this. You still give them 90. Yeah, 90 is a credit score. 90 is a, their credit score, and their days to pay right now is 15. So they're all the way down to two weeks. They're, they're cutting checks in two weeks, which is actually, you guys know, that's actually not bad for a broker that's when it comes to paying a carrier. Okay. So, yeah, what so, else, so what else can we see here? So if we can find the brokers, let's see I am independent dispatcher, and I want to offer my service because you guys want – load board which give independent dispatchers they can prove actually that they are in business and they actually not going to misuse your load board that's why we have affiliation most of my students get the one week uh one month free with our code and they actually can use load board as independent dispatchers so can i use this to actually find new carriers because brokers well we kind of their mercy right now in this market we still have to watch for the credit score but we also have to do the second step we also have to verify with the factoring are they approved by factoring of the care so let's go to uh carriers how can i find a new business who i can call and say well uh, i see that you guys come to the business i would love to offer you my uh, dispatch service and i am such a good dispatcher because i even have the that one the highest paying load board so i know the thread lines i know how to use trial i know how to search post and how to read the data right because that's what pro dispatchers do so how can i find new carriers well, DHT directory is not going to be a great tool for finding new carriers. We actually don't have any tools that are out there right now to say, hey, here's here's 10 new carriers you guys should pay attention to. So that's something that we don't have currently, but that's not a bad idea for a product over here or a feature. So thank you for that tip. But <laughs> you can find carriers in the directory. You just won't know. I mean, you can't. There's no filter that says show me carriers that have just been added to your system in the last two weeks. But you can search for them the same way I search for a broker, company type carrier this time. And I select the state and I saw a city. Like I can put in Chicago. Okay. Chicago. 
Chicago. Whoops. So I got to put Illinois in there. That makes sense. So I select Chicago, use this city, and then uh, I can put a radius around there. Like, show me all the carriers within 50 miles of, of Chicago, Illinois. And I okay. search, and here are okay. all those carriers. And how? So, how, let's how, click how on one. so let's click on 99 Freight. Funny, funny name. We're in there. 99 Freight Inc. Okay. So since 2020. So that means that they've been your customer since 2020, right? That's correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so they located it uh, in whatever, Ham, actually Hammond, Indiana, because we put the radios, okay? So they have two reviews, okay? Let's go down so we can show people how the carriers can see. So we see that they have 40 power units, 35 drivers. Well, shortage of the drivers, so their safety needs to be updated. Okay, uh, general freight, so probably they are dry vans. We can see it by commodities, so probably dry vans. We can see that they have common active authority, minimum 752 have active MC. Of course, everybody has at least a million uh, passenger. No, okay. What else can we see? We see yeah, that they have yeah. uh, okay insurance. And here's a safety score. So brokers can actually see right away your safety scores right here because this is connected to FMCSA safer, right? Am I yes, correct? Yeah. Yes, it is. You can see the source of this information is FMCSA. We're grabbing this information every night from their website to update our website so we can get the freshest information each day. So we wow, can say I, I, that. I didn't know that, that you guys do it every day. I thought you do it like on a monthly basis. So you oh, actually no. do it every day. Yeah, we worked it out with the FMCSA to where we can, what we call scrape their website once every night. Yeah. Okay. And that's what brokers want to see when they looking at the score when they're gonna want gonna go more in details they can go of course into fmcsa right so if you click if you click it's gonna take you to fmcsa if you click on that blue FMCSA, yeah. it's probably gonna take you to the safer and then you have to start all over so you do have at least one hyperlink which takes you to official fmcsa and then people need to learn how to use that good job yeah. okay Let's go back. So this is good. We can wear the brokers. We can wear the carriers. We can wear everybody. And this is official information, which is updated daily. Another star for you. You got three stars so far. In my class, whoever gets five stars actually getting the special bonus. I don't know, Mike. I have to come up with probably some request to <laughs> incorporate into your software. You're not going to receive the bonus. You're going to receive extra workflow. <laughs> so let's go back to other things you have. So we have the that directory. Remember that menu? Okay. So yeah. where was that menu? Okay. We have, okay. Report bad behavior. So yes. who can use this? I see the brokers can do it. Carriers can do it. Shippers are receiving. So how is that done? So let's click on that. Let's yeah, all of you guys. All of you guys have the ability. Alex. To Alex is an independent dispatcher. She's direct. She's mean. And she wants every dollar for this load. So how we can report Alex. So let's see. So what we want here is we, we want you to fill out a form. What, what kind of complaint it is. We want your information because <clears throat> we might need to contact you. We want the company being reported. And so we're going to get all that information from you. And depending on the type of complaint that we're getting, the bad behavior that we're hearing, it's, we'll, we'll handle it different ways. So for instance, if we're getting um, a complaint in here that's that's saying somebody's double brokering, well, that's egregious. That's something that's that's against the law. We take that very seriously here. So we, our compliance team will receive this form and they'll reach out to the players involved and they'll try, they'll investigate the situation. And if we prove that a company is indeed double brokering in our system, we'll kick them out just like that. They're gone, banned from our system. They'll, they won't be allowed back in. So that's how we're using the, the, the forms that you guys are sending us to. We're really creating, we're, you're really basically creating an investigation for us. And we have a rather large team of investigators here that go out and hunt down this fraud. Okay. Actually, going back to that, and I'm going to take it out so people can see us better. So recently, I want to see how fair it is for the whole site. So, for example, we have human human sense to all of this, right? Things happen in trucking, drugs break down. Sometimes owner, operator is picky, whatever. Me as a broker, I can like, okay, I'm going to punish you guys, right? I am going to send that I think you double worry just because you canceled load on me the last minute or you told me the truck broke down, whatever, right? The human factor plays a big role in trucking. 
So let's say I'm one of those brokers who thinks that I'm going to be powerful and I'm going to report you without real proof that it was a double brokering. Can you honestly tell me, me as a carrier, when I receive that, if I can prove that this is not the case, that broker just got pissed because, well, sometimes they don't understand that breakdowns happen, right? I had a breakdown or maybe my truck got stopped and I got violation and I'm out of service. I mean, lots do get canceled for different reasons, right? So are you going to give a ch are you gonna give a chance to carrier to actually respond and say, well, this is what the load, this is what happened, this is our conversation between us and broker here, because usually we write emails, right? So we can see. So if I, as a carrier, is going to prove you, listen, guys, here's actually probably young kid from TQ Alpha wants to feel powerful. Are you really going to investigate and be fair as much as possible? Of course, we're not going to Supreme Court, right? But humanly possible. Are you going to hear the both sides? Absolutely. We, I can tell you 100% that DAT, we do not have a side. There is not, oh, we, we like our brokers more or damn, those carriers, we just love them so much. We don't pick a side. We ride the middle. And so if uh, if I can, I can guarantee you that, yes, we would look into it. We contact both parties. It's not and we don't just do things on hearsay. It's not just like a broker calls us up and says they're double brokering. We're like, OK, let's kick them out. There is an investigation and we give each side their time to provide us proof. So, yeah, I, I think I. I feel like we're one of the best in the industry at this, uh, honestly, as far as some of our competitors are concerned. I think we I think we have the largest team of fraud busters out there that that spend a lot of time investigating these. And I just want to throw one thing out, kind of uh, patting ourselves on the back. Um, she's no longer with us. She finally retired. But the leader of that team for years, Tammy was her name. She worked closely with the police departments and she actually won honorary chief of, uh, I think it was Atlanta, Georgia, for helping bust a crime ring there. And she was a DAT employee, but she, I mean, she works in our team currently still works with law enforcement. When we uncover scams, we are working with law enforcement to bust those up. We have an active role in those investigations. Well, there, there is your one more star. And you know why I brought it out? Because I do dispatch every day. And I am not going to be really talk much about it, but we do have some new product which calls Carrier Assure, which is based not on the real information. And they do only because they want the carriers, new carriers, to pay monthly fee. You have no chance to go and respond to any report which is not even there. So they have the audit team which is going to say, well, they might be double brokered. They give you the rating. And as a carrier, you cannot even respond, but they still charge you monthly fee. That's why, and actually, this is going to be my next big live show because I have so much proof that they are ruining life of the small carriers. That's why I'm so proud that you actually prove to us that you will be taking both sides and you guys are going to do as much as possible to investigate, but hear both sides, carriers, brokers, shippers, owner operators, right? Even the dispatchers. And because all of us, we do have proof. And sometimes I tell you, this is a human, human sense in this. Sometimes people get pissed for no reason and people want to feel powerful. So I'm actually very proud and actually very intrigued that you did answer me. They're like full capacity, extra star for you, but let's go back to a product. Very impressed. So, Tammy, thanks, Tammy, for keeping those cameras away from <laughs> the DAT1, that power before. And please make sure, even if you retire, help us to get rid of the scammers because this industry deserves to become better. So, complaints are there. You guys respond within timely matter. So, you investigate. Let's go back. What else do we have on your menu there? Oh, so yeah. We so, we were in the tool section. So, yes, what else do we have here? Tools. Yes. What else do we have there? Okay, right. so market conditions, we kind of already went through this, right? So you can choose, uh, you can go back. It depends, again, on the subscription, right? I can go as far as, or does, it, does it matter which subscription I have to use a market condition or it doesn't? So why don't we clarify that Tracker Edge, so it's cheaper, a cheaper subscription, how is it going to incorporate now to DT1? So can we touch up on that? 
Yeah, we can. So we are keeping our packages, our subscription packages. We're keeping those intact. So we're we're, we're going to lose our product names like Trucker's Edge Standard, Trucker's Edge Pro, or Power Select, Power Off. We're we're going to lose the, the the brand name of Power Trucker's Edge. But all those packages stay around, and they're just re rebranded DAT One Standard, DAT One Enhanced, DAT One Pro Select, and and Office. So that's what we're going to have now. And and uh, and. And you're all, all of those those people that subscribe to those different load boards will all now be logging into DAT1. And it will have features available to you based on your package. So let me give you a for instance. If you're a Trucker's Edge standard user logging into DAT1 and searching for loads, perhaps, you're going to not see a rate. You're not going to see a 30-day rate or a 15-day rate because standard users don't get that at $45 a month. But if you log in as a Trucker's Edge enhanced user, you will now on your searches, you'll start seeing a, a 30 day rate because that's what our enhanced users get. And if you uh, log in as a Trucker's Edge Pro or DAT1 Pro, you'll get that 15 day rate. You'll have access to try haul at that point. So we're still going to keep our features and our differences. So DAT1 is just going to be the one platform that we're using moving forward. What is a land makers? I always wanted to have a uh, clear answer on that. So land land makers is used by whom? Yeah, lane makers can be used by brokers, carriers alike. Um, and it really is. I I love this tool. <laughs> it is not used enough. I absolutely love this tool, though. Um, it, it's a tool that uh, I know it's spinning around because I just got, I just got to get out of test. <laughs> I just got to get out of test. I'm going to go back to power like like you had a moment ago. And click on lane makers from there but uh um but yeah so let me describe what lane makers is as i'm logging back in here um lane makers is a wonderful tool for you to meet business partners in lanes that you're not familiar with so that's quite simply put like if you're working like if you're if let's say that you have a backhaul a regular backhaul that you're going to be having from chicago to denver and you're going to regularly have this backhaul from Chicago to Denver. Well, you don't know what brokers work in that environment. You don't know what brokers are posting there. So if you go to Lane Makers, um, you can actually put in like, I'm looking for brokers that uh, have loads from, I said, I think I said Chicago to Denver. Chicago. Oh, I'm putting in a <laughs> flatbed first. Let me do flatbed first. <laughs> Okay. Wrong field, but Chicago. There we go. Going but who Denver. has that? Because I have like your highest paying uh, subscription, and it does not lane makers. Is that extra money for them? It is. It's a, it's part of our select and office packages. So standard enhanced pro. No, it's not going to be in those packages. It's introduced at our select level. So that is a more expensive load board. And you can see what I'm showing you guys here is. If this lane was a lane I was not familiar with, I'm always going to have this Chicago to Denver backhaul. DAT is telling you guys that here are a bunch of carriers or brokers, I'm sorry, that you might want to talk to. We think you should get a hold of King of Freight. Why? Because in the last 30 days, they've posted a load from Chicago to Denver for flatbeds 111 times. And during that time frame, they've done 16 searches for trucks like mine going from Chicago to Denver. So these, this could very well be a very good business partner for you. You just have to now reach out, basically a cold call. You need to reach out to that broker and introduce yourself and say, hey, twice a month, I'm going to be in Chicago heading back to Denver. I see that you have loads going to, from Chicago to Denver. Would you like to do business with me? And you yeah. just met yourself a new business partner in a lane that you did not previously know. So how much does a... A DAT select cost because we have it's a, one. It's about a jump from, I think it's about a hundred bucks more from, uh, I, I don't want to quote me on that because I don't have it in front of me, Alexandra, but I think it's uh, Trucker's Edge Pro is going to be like 135, I believe. And I think uh, select is 235 or roughly a hundred dollars more a month. Yeah, because we ha I have 180, which is pro. So then I thought that we only had office. I never really thought that we had select in between. There is a, so yeah, there's uh the, the packages go standard, enhanced, pro, select, office. So yeah, there is one in between. Okay, and so it, I'm gonna I'm gonna update for that because I love this feature. I, I don't mind calling, and that's actually pretty good. Like you said, 
if you go to certain area, especially if you go to the area which is dead, right? In this case, you actually choosing the best, best example, Chicago to Denver. Well, Chicago to Denver, it's very easy to find a lot, but get out of the Denver, Colorado, it's challenging. So if you can make relationship with the, let's say, next five of these brokers, well, you can kind of be on their mailing list or you can say, well, I'm going to be in Denver again on Thursday. Can you help me out? And that's how the relationship interact and build because unfortunately, when you go to that areas, no debt's going to help you load board, no truck stop, no one, two, three, not any other load board. It's going to be back to building relationship as a dispatcher, as a carrier, as a shipper, as a receiver. It's always go back to making those connections. And I put a little tougher one in there. I did Miami, Florida this time, okay? So Miami is much different than Chicago, and we're still able to give you suggestions. Like these company, this, this company posted two loads from Miami to Denver. You know, they had loads in the last 30 days. You might want to give them a call. Yeah, simple logistics out of Illinois. TQL, we don't count TQL. Freight of all kinds, it's okay. DAPA freight and logistics out of Florida. Okay, and what are those little hearts? What does it mean, those little hearts? Do, are you like them? Do you give them special hearts? Or that's what you can do in a load board. I mean, are you picking and choosing, or what is those hearts? Well, I can show you right here. The hearts show up over here too, right? I'm seeing a heart next to TQL here. And with the package that I'm on, I'm on. I'm using the office package, Alexander. So I'm. I have it all, right? I, I'm in God mode basically here. So I have the ability when I'm looking at a company, when I click on them, if I like, maybe I've got done business with this particular company before, and I really like them. I can come down now and mark them. Um, where is it? And mark them as one of my preferred customers. And when oh. I do that, it puts a little heart next to them. And, or I can block them too. We have the block feature. So you can like, ooh, I don't want to see you anymore. Or, oh, I love you. I want to put a heart next to you. And the benefit of doing the heart next to them is when you're looking at a list of all these search results, it can get massive. Let's say you have a thousand results on your screen because you search Chicago and there's so many loads up there. Which ones well, do you start you with? You definitely favor in TQL. I guess they're the one of the biggest uh, users of your load board. So we don't agree on your heart there, but... I mean, I can see this being helpful, especially with a block list. You know why? Because we do have a lot of new brokers or people who are not honest in the business. So I actually would want not to see them. So because sometimes you cannot remember all the names, right? And sometimes they choose different names. So I would like to block. But remember one thing. Sometimes you block them and you still need the load. So you have to remember to go and unblock them. Yeah. Right. And we show you, I was just going to show you, there's a filter right here. So if you had a, a big list and you wanted to just show the ones with a heart on them, you could come to your company filter up here and say, you know what, just show me the preferred ones. And it's going to get rid of all the other ones. And it's just going to show me all the ones with a heart next to them. So that really narrows it down. I mean, and instead of a thousand loads, I'm looking at 10. I'm focusing on yeah, the 10. That well, I really you like. just to me, you favor TQL, but we know why. It's okay. Oh. It's business, Mike. It's business. Well, okay, what else I got to I got to do this real quick. Okay. I'm going to go <laughs> because I just, what I just mark companies when I'm training. And so, <laughs> but I'm going to go in there and I'm going to take that little heart off Alexandra. And hopefully I get a star for that. Thank you. You got to start because we cannot just favor the biggest uh, broker on the market. And we, we know the market is tough and we have a lot of good and bad apples in big brokerages. So let's go back to your menu. What else are we missing? So we have all of these features. So what other tools? Maybe something that something brand new. OK, Carrier Watch. We know that. What, okay, so what all this? services is this yeah. your services or you up just kind of partnership with the otr load factoring dat assurance parallel insurance can we just touch up on those really fast yeah so i'll touch base with like the otr is our business partner um so they are the factoring company that we partnered up with so if you want to factor a load through dat1 we'll show you a blue check mark and if there's a blue check mark they can they'll factor you and one thing I want to point out about OTR, and, and this really kind of surprises some people, OTR is a non-recourse factoring company, which means if you factor a load with them, they're going to take one to 4% of your freight bill, one to 4%, which is actually not that much when you grand scheme of things. But here's the thing. 
They can't come back in two weeks and say, oh man, you know that thousand dollars I paid you two weeks ago? Yeah, the broker stiffed me. I'm going to need that money back. No, when they buy this, when they pay you for in 24 hours, they're buying that contract and they're buying the risk of not being paid. So one of the one of the things I tell, I love to tell carriers now, especially when carriers call me and say, you know, damn it, this broker didn't pay me or I'm, I, I got another no pay complaint I want to give you. It's like start factoring your loads. If you were to factor your loads, you would never have to worry about not getting paid again. You're going to get paid within 24 hours every time. And if the broker stiffs anybody, it's going to be the factoring company themselves. So that's what I would say about OTR. Um, I'm going to skip assurance for a second and move to per load insurance. This is a partnership we have with uh, LoadSure. And LoadSure does offer per trip insurance. So if you find yourself undercovered for a load that you want to haul, you can go into uh, to their website, link directly from us. You can type in your from and your to, and it's going to give you the cost of, of, of insurance for that particular trip. And you'll purchase how fast, it. How fast do they work? Because, for example, I need the load and this cargo, I have, I mean, most of us have 100,000. And let's say they do need 150. So if I go through this step, how fast is their response? It's it, it's all on it's all online, Alexander. So you're seriously just filling out a short form about where you're coming from, where you're going to. They're going to give you a quote. You're going to purchase it. And as soon as you hit submit and put in your credit card or whatever to pay for it, you're done. You have that insurance. You get on the road. You're covered. Okay. And that's what some of the dispatchers need to understand. Sometimes you need to get out of the certain area, or maybe this load is, is paying way more than average load, but it's just a matter of your cargo coverage. Sometimes it does make a sense to go and pay. And here's a tool for you before you're going to say no, or before you're going to jump your gun, go here, get the quote and then decide, because let's say if the load is paying thousand bucks, right. And for you to get, and let's say, okay, let's say we are your three bucks per mile minimum at least, right. 300 miles, but the amount of insurance they ask is going to cost you way more. Well, it's still not, not going to make sense, even though you can buy it, you have to look at the numbers and you have to see. Does it make sense for you to do it? Then do it. So this is a good tool and you do it for one load instead of calling me as an agent and saying, Alex, can you buy my insurance for 150000 just because I have one load? Well, it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to bump your insurance for five trucks for 100 plus. It's not going to be that instant. Plus, you need to pay for all five trucks. So this is a good way and we do cover that in the classes. I just want to people who watch us to understand that you guys provide this right here in the load board that is instant, which is very good. What is the difference between that and that assurance? So what is that assurance? That assurance is something that you will not see any other load board provider offer. Um, and it's something exclusively that we have. It's in a way, it's basically us putting our money where our mouth is. We're, we're so confident that the brokers in our system are going to pay you. Um, that if they have an assurance icon next to them, if you see that assurance, and I think if I go back to search, uh, if I if I go back to search loads, you can see that you, some of them have this assurance icon. This one doesn't, but if I scroll down to the next one, I probably would see it. I imagine there it is, DAT assurance. And so, if you were to book this load right now, before you leave this screen, if you were to click on DAT assurance, what's going to happen? You're going to you're going to provide us a couple pieces of information, like how many miles was a trip, what's the rate that you agreed upon, what's your name. Once you do that and submit it to us. What's going to happen is we're going to sit and wait for you to come and tell us if you got paid or not. And if you get paid, you'll come right back to assurance and you'll you'll indicate that you got paid. But after but six, you don't have to pay for that. Or this is no, 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 no. Assurance is absolutely free to anybody who has pro or above. So it's our, it starts at our pro package on up and it's absolutely free to use. And you can assure as many loads as you want. There is no harm to you with assuring or no cost to you whatsoever. The benefit is if you don't get paid, we have a collection agency that can try to collect for you. So after 60 days of you not getting paid, we're going to work with our collection agency and we're going to try to get that money back for you without you having to do a, a thing. Now, so if can you click on this to show us how it looks kind of? So if you click, let's say whatever on that, that assurance, so it's going to take you to this window. So would you say, okay, so here you go. 
So you're going to put the company, you're going to put blah, blah, blah. You have to put the base rate where it's going, mileage, where it's coming from, where is it going, and you just submit. So you guys have this information. And let's say, I mean, in this case, of course, we pick the TQL, they pay. So if I see some new broker, right? If I see somebody with MC starting with one, four, one, three newer brokers, if I am going to click that because I did post it on your world board, let me just be clear. So I did use them. I posted, I did click the data assurance. I gave you all the information. And if they do not pay, you're going to help me to collect from them? Yeah. So after 60 days, after 60 days, the, a collect button appears next to that load. And you can see like this one's been 77 days now. If I hit collect, what's going to happen now is DAT is going to work with our collection agency. We're going to try to collect that money for you without you having to go hire your own collection agency. We're going to do it for you. Now, here's where it really gets interesting. Uh, of course, if we collect your money, we'll, you get your money. But if, we, if we're not able to collect, you know, maybe we just our collection agent tried for 60 days and they couldn't get a hold of them. That's when we credit your account with our own money. And if you're on the pro package, we'll credit your account $250. If you're on the select package, we'll credit your account $500. And if you're on our office package, we'll credit your account $1,000 of our own money, all because we have faith that that broker is going to pay you. So once again, absolutely free to use as many loads as you want to assure you can. And the only thing you really need to do for us is at the bottom here, you need to send this collection service agreement to us, which is basically you giving us the permission to collect for you if you ask us to. And that's assurance, you guys. So nowadays, in this uncertainty with everything, with economics, with uh, aliens coming to our planet, you know, things happen every day. Should I be using this for every load, even though it is a TQL load, even though it is a C.H. Robinson load, even though it's GB Hunt, should I, as a dispatcher, not be lazy and just go and if you have the data assurance just kind of put information to protect myself yeah I mean, it's not a bad idea i mean the, the, the what's the the harm in it is you have to come back here eventually and tell us you got paid right or this screen's going to get pretty big so that's the only thing is you're going to have to come back and there's going to be an extra step that you might have to tell us you got paid uh, but some people are not going to want, you know, if you're familiar with a broker, if you've never been stiffed by a broker, then do would you really need to come in here and do that? No, probably would be a waste of your time. But if you're if you're, you've never worked with this broker before, to your point, Alexandra, this is a new person. They look at their MC number; they're brand new. Those yeah. are the people that I'm I'm going to assure every single load I get from those people because I don't I don't get charged for it. It's absolutely free for me to use. Well, sounds good. Let's go back. What else we have left? So we have. So many good things here where I can I can tell you this. I never used it before because I always thought, and now, guys, look at me. I am learning something new. I always thought that you have to pay every time you want to do the debt assurance. That's why I never even clicked on it. Oh, no. <laughs> Free to use. <laughs> so now, oh, I know it starts from me. So let's go down. What else we have? So we have, okay, what is all this? Road services. What is this? Yeah, so we only have a couple left to talk about here. We have the fine truck services and we have cross-border services. So the fine truck services is just, it's more for your drivers. So your drivers, they, your, you know, drivers of big rigs have big rig problems. You know, if they are looking for, maybe they're getting to the end of their day, their driving time is about to expire. I need to find a place to, to, to rest. I need to find a place to pull over or, or I need to find a place to eat. I can't get to my truck through that McDonald's drive through So fine truck services is meant to help truck drivers find services nearby. So all they need to do is come in here and tell us uh, uh, what service type they need. Like maybe I need to tow a truck. Where do you need the service? I need it in this, in this zip code. And it's going to try to find any of those services in that area for you. And it's going to give you the directions on how to get there. You get the vendor details, tells you if they're open or not. And so, yes, this is our way of trying to help you find for, uh, are those you know, people who are partnering up with you or you just uh, get the information from like Google search and everybody there? All those are really people who you know that they do a good business. Are they your vendors or they just general in information? We're, uh, we partnered with Fine Truck Service as an as a independent company. So we partnered with Fine Truck Service uh, and this, this is their information. Okay, so they are your partner. So when you actually... 
uh, recommend them. That means that you kind of seen how long they've been in business. They, they do good reviews. So you can kind of trust these people, right? Yeah, we actually did. Yeah, yeah, we can. And, and just so you know, we used to get this information. We used to collect this. We used to have our own system to do this. And we, we abandoned that to work with Pine Truck Service because we noticed that they had a better one. And so let's just, instead of maintaining our own database of all this, why don't we just use a better one that we found in Pine Truck Service? So that's, yeah, they're very good. Okay. So here's a question. So let's, let's, so we kind of cover everything, right? Or we had something left. There was one other thing and it's just cross-border services. And that's a, another partner of ours. It's called uh, Gets or E-Manifest. And so if you are doing those cross-border trips, mostly between Canada and the United and the United States, this is a way for you to uh, to basically send electronically your manifest ahead of time to the border patrol. So, I mean, kind of think of it like the TSA check line of those pre-TSA people that I'm always jealous of because I'm standing in the regular security line and I'm watching all these people fly by me. That's cross-border services. You don't, you're not going to get stuck there at the border forever. They're already going to have your manifest. They're already... They're already going to have a lot of the work done before you even arrive so, at the border. So you're, you're going to get a efficiency, So you bring in efficiency. You're saving the time. When carriers save the time, they make more profit because they're not losing hours mm -hmm. of getting all of this. So that this is actually a good feature for people who deal with Mexico or Canada. So probably a lot of people and dispatchers probably don't even know that it exists there. So probably whoever deals with this should look, in, look into that feature. Well, great job. So let's stop Shane, but answer a few questions. So here's a question from Trey Lincoln, one of our previous uh, students, and he's a carrier. So what is that doing to combat double brokering? Well, we already uh, named Miss Tammy. I don't know her last name. So she's in charge of going after scammers. But what other things do you guys kind of screen when you – let me ask this. For example, I give the quote to all of my students and I do advertise. And of course, when they mention dispatch training center, at least that knows, well, they went to training. They are really going to be dispatchers. What if I am just a person who tries to do scamming? How do you actually see if this person is going to be connected to actually independent dispatch? And what are the steps there? Well, I'm not, I can tell you, I'm not part of the compliance team. So I'm not okay. part of the fraud team here. I do all the product training. So I'm very, I'm very adept at all the different products and services we have. But as far as the fraud team, the theft team, they are a pretty massive team here at DAT. And they've gotten, oh, they've easily quadrupled in size in the last five years. Um, so we've added a lot of headcount, uh, a lot of investigators to our team. And so that's one thing that we're doing to combat double brokering is we're, we're adding more headcount so we can so we can keep up with the, the number of cases that are reported to us every day. We are actively kicking people out when we find out that they have violated our services. We are proactively banning people from coming back on if they if we detected that they have um, nefarious behavior in the past. So we have ways that we're able to block them from even signing back up. So we are in, we're continuing to look to work on even more security measures. Um, you guys might realize that we just recently had you update all of your passwords to 15 character passwords. I know I can barely I remember. A 15 I know, password. I know. Not I'm heavy. All my kids' names are shorter. So come on, you asking me for 15 characters. You know, I guess I need to start looking for like new hobbies or new cities to visit which have 15 characters. But so you give me a good idea. Probably we're going to ask Abby and uh, other representatives from DAT, from U.S. security team, and we're going to do live about that because this is, would be something which really going on and we need to reinsure people that you guys are doing a great job. So that's a good tip for future live. Let's answer this. So somebody's asking, is it okay to post a comment section extra equipment the driver has with them, like straps, EDC? Absolutely. That's what it's for, you guys. We encourage that because we know there's not a field for, you know, uh, extra equipment. You know, there's nothing for that. The comment line is really a free form field for you to say whatever you want to say. And if, and that's a great place to put whether whether uh, what sort of equipment uh, that you have on that truck. So, yes, absolutely. Put that in the comment lines. The brokers read those things. Plus, as I teach in the class, this is your sales point. For example, you know that you're delivering 5 p.m. Start with late truck. 
you know that you have e-track system well you also need to put them that it's vertical or horizontal if you have 10 straps put their 10 straps because some shipments needs 12 or 5. if you know that you have uh, wooden floors put wooden floors windows roll ups that's what i teach and i am such a big on those details because it's gonna help brokers not to waste your time because they know what, for example, we need roll up doors. So if you have really roll up doors and you're gonna post it right there, well, chances are that broker who really needs a roll up door is gonna call you first because this is something uncommon. So yes, guys, and Mike just confirmed and he's an expert, put as much as possible. Okay, we have a few more questions because I know the time went <laughs> so fast and we covered a lot. Um, Alex, is there training on that one like the one you taught us in a class? Yes, there is a training and we just went there. So let me bring back when you guys go, right? They did a great. Let me just go back to like, okay, that uh, that one, right? So guys, when you go there, they just show and Mike was just going over this. They have the help center and they did an incredible job for everybody. So if you are a broker, if you are using mobile, if you are a carrier, so all of this is here. That if you click how to enable alarm, right? Silly question, right? They are telling you do this, this, and this, and it's even connecting you to YouTube. So DAT one actually did beyond my imagination. Great job! So you guys have to do it. Unfortunately, what is she referring to? Remember that lady who kind of had red hair? I used to be blonde, Mike, so that's why. <laughs> now they say, oh, you look like that lady. Click here, click here, click here, click here. So now that lady is gone, guys, we are in a new product. And actually, they have way more support and explanation right now than before. Because that lady was not really working well sometimes. You know, she would just stay on the same click here, click here, click here. <laughs> so we went through that. So Mike, Mike already told us where to go. So anybody can go and learn this, right? It's always there. You don't have to pay for this. It's available for anybody there. Okay. I would, I would add one more last thing is keep an eye on our dashboard. Uh, that's the dashboard you log into. We will be advertising here some webinars that we'll be offering here shortly. So webinars just to go over, hey, this is how we use it. If you if you have never, never used it before, you want a kind of a walkthrough, we're going to have a webinar and show you. So keep your so eye out. How, how, how did you get to this one? So you went to your the dashboard. dashboard. <laughs> okay. And you went and yeah, to... So, I'm just saying that it'll be here when we start offering those webinars, you'll see them. They'll, they'll show up right here. This is where we tell you what's new, you know, what's coming out, what's new and access to the help center. So this is where you'll see um, the webinars being advertised if you're at all interested in taking those. So keep your. Keep and are those are going to be free or they're paid webinars? Oh, absolutely free. Our training never costs a dime here. We want to train our customers. We realize if we have a moment to train them, and show and, and really get a chance to show them what, what this thing can do. Those are the people that stick around forever. They're not quitting a month later or two months later. They're staying as customers because they see the value. So we will never charge for training here. We will stay on the phone as long as we have to and, and to ensure that you guys understand how you can best use our services. Well, Mike, it was a pleasure. I am like, beyond please because it is nice when person really loves the product but also person who knows all the details so there is an extra five stars for you it's not as easy to do with me i tell you this you probably can see that i can give you a lot of insight and why because i use this product every day because i see different sides i'm not just an instructor i also the carrier i'm also dispatcher so when i look at any product i want to make sure that we are in one place can get this this and this done efficiently that it's easy to monitor but also big on data because data is very important to become that pro dispatcher so i'm very pleased cannot wait to meet your team on mats i know you're not going you already told me there hopefully i will be one of those ladies who are gonna give the testimonials and after today i can tell you this first i was negative a little bit now you put kind of new information to me and i actually start loving this new product i just need to get used to interface just maybe commas which is okay we can get used to it but i actually do see 
that this is better product. And I would wanted to really thank you for coming here, spending time and improving. And what I did not hear from other people, because as you know, being a dispatch uh, training center, we cannot just love you like you love TQL, right? I love everybody who has a good product. So for me, when you tell me that you guys listening and you improving every day, this is not everybody tells me on the show. So that's why, again, I am very, very pleased to be partners with you guys. And I am very, very motivated to continue with you. Like you say, when you start using the good product, even when sometimes a glitch is or something, 15 character passwords, you can look over when you really can do your job better. So thank you so much. And hopefully one day when I don't know which office you are in Denver or if you're in Portland, hopefully we'll meet in person. But now I know when I have some ideas, I will shoot them to you so you can push them through your uh, product because it does take a dispatch to see something, you know, to see some things which could be necessary. You have my contact information. I would love to help out whenever I can. So please reach out whenever you have questions or better yet, suggestions on how to do better. Yeah. Thank you, Mike, so much. Enjoy your evening. We're going to uh, finish our life with my students after the little break. And uh, I'll see you hopefully one day in Denver or Portland. Thank Portland you so it much. Is. <laughs> Bye, Thank Alexandra. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to be back. And remember, if you still want to sign up for any of their product, and probably code is going to be changing because they did already tell me that the code will be changing soon, you still can use our code, which is displayed right here, right? You guys can actually call. And if you are independent dispatcher, you need to tell them that code. You need to tell them that you are got that quote from a dispatch training center and you guys gonna get 30 days free when you get the 30 days free please take the best select uh, subscription or pro uh, subscription so you can use this tool so you can learn them right make sure you follow their webinars and guys you can get used to this this is actually more efficient and of course you have to understand the load board is a key. You as a dispatcher, you have to have a knowledge. And that's why here in Dispatch Training Center, we're giving you a strong foundation. We're making sure that you know the tools, but you also have the skills and you have that logical thinking. And it's always me, Alex, who is trying to push you to your best to become that pro dispatcher. Don't ever be a desperate dispatcher. The best Price does not mean the best load. We're concentrating on rate per mile. Even when you look at the data, you have to read the numbers. Just because it's going to be orange doesn't mean you want to go there. You have to look through the ratio between the loads and the trucks. You have to look through different equipment. You have to be realistic. But load work gives you those tools. You can be faster. You can be better than everybody else. And of course, for my uh, students, keep learning, keep improving, making sure that you finish in your homeworks for students who are in a class right now. People are already signing up for the April. Most of you who are going to be on Matt's uh, uh, show in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, hopefully I can see you in person. And I love you. And I wish you a safe trucking, profitable trucking, and trucking is not going anywhere. Market will change. Rates going to go up. And you one day will be pro like me. Love you guys. And love, love seeing all of you. And of course, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and sign up for our future classes. And remember, we have what? We have how to open your company webinar this Sunday. Do not miss it. $199 for three hours. That's when I'm going to teach you all the tricks, all the tips. And we're going to make sure that you know what you're doing. Love you guys and see you soon.